God is good. God is good. All the time. God is not evil. God is righteous. Amen. If it's in our life, it's for our good, for the destruction of the flesh and for the edification of the soul and the spirit. Amen? Amen. If we can remember that, then we can move forward in the Lord and we won't get shipwrecked and we won't get sidetracked and we won't lose focus. Amen? Brad, you were talking about humility. Steve was telling me, I was talking with Steve last night after Bible study, he said there was a song and he just, he just hates it. And it uh, says, bring me to my knees so I can talk with you again. Some of those lines. And, and it's like, okay, Brad, you were telling me the other day that the closest road to, or the fastest road to humility is humiliation. That is right. Well, how about us just get on our knees? Instead of having to be humbled, how about humbling ourselves? You, after a while you, you know, on. at some point, we're going to realize that the hard way is the long way. The hard now, way is a lot more painful. The hard way is painful, hoping you know, right? <laughs> you sound like Man, a preacher. Man, we know, oh, we I know. know. <laughs> you preach it, girl, preach it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the hard way is the long way. And I was thinking about this today because I've been in the ministry, and I've been a believer in this ministry. Turn around for over 20 years. And I look at guys like Abraham, it took him a while. Yeah. Look at guys like Jacob, it took him a while. Yeah, that's right. Look at guys like a lot of these guys, it took him a while. Joseph took him a while. Moses took him a while. You realize it takes a little time for the Lord to work things out of us. That's right. Amen. And it's okay that it takes time as long as we remember the focus that God is good. Amen. He only has good intentions to us. He only has good motives to us. He only has the best for us. And the things that he puts in our way that are, we think in our nature, our flesh would consider restrictive, are actually for our liberation. Because what you were saying, Brad, about his, his, what did you say? It wasn't wisdom, but his... The weakness of God. His the foolishness, of God's foolishness is wiser than, a, than man's wisdom. I mean, just think about that. I mean, God is so far above us, so far over us, so so beyond our comprehension that it. imagine the pride and arrogance that it is that we hold when we think we know more than God does. And when we're questioning the things that are going on around us in the sense of His intentions, that's expressly what we're doing. And you know what's given, what's, what's helped me over this past 20 years is the history that I've learned is that I know some people are going through some hard times right now. Your faith is being tried. You absolutely have to go through it. It's not an option. If you're going to walk with the Lord in strength, in power, in might, and fulfill the role in His body, you have to go through it. It has to be done. And I remember the first many years that I was in the ministry, I had to go through it. I went through stuff that would run 9 out of 10 people off. No. But that's what I needed for the Lord to prepare me for what He had for me. And He's still preparing me. He's still preparing me for yet more to come. But I can tell you, I don't care what you're going through, I don't care the struggles, whether it's relationship, whether it's money, whether it's job, whether it's whatever... I can tell you that God's bigger than your problem. Amen. I can tell you that no matter what it is, I don't care if it's your mom, if it's your father, if it's your husband, if it's your wife, if it's your kids, it doesn't matter. God is bigger than your problem. Amen. What he's trying to do is the more we resist trusting him, the harder it gets. Why? Because he loves you. He chastens those that he loves. And he's not going to let you accomplish liberty without him if he loves you. Think of it. What would happen if you actually accomplished the solution to the problem separate of God? Who would get the glory? You would. Or whatever mechanism or whatever means you did it. Okay? It's like AA. Yeah. If AA doesn't save you, AA doesn't deliver you, AA does not the thing that removes the drunkardness from your soul, no. it's Jesus Christ. That's right. Okay? He uses a lot of different things. And he may use AA for some people, but it's Jesus Christ that does the fixing. Just Amen. don't say it too often. Don't like that. Yeah, well. Okay? What will fix your relationship problems, Jesus? What will fix your monetary problems, Jesus? What will fix the problems in your kids, Jesus? What will fix the problems in your relationship, Jesus? He will. 
But we have to surrender our control, surrender our, our knowledge, our will, our way, and the world's way, because it's so permeated into our lifestyle. It's so permeated into our thought process. Right? We have so many things that we take on that are the world's way of thinking that we actually attribute to God that aren't. That we've got to get shed. And the way we get shed is through the tribulation in our lives. And we see this over and over and over. If we go over to Romans chapter 5, and you all should know this one by heart. Verse 3, and I'll just do it briefly. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. They're not shying away from tribulation, they welcome it. Why? It strengthens your faith. And it destroys the flesh. I was listening to somebody on the radio. They were going on about, it was a silly skin thing, but the point is this one lady had lost everything, you know, in a pretty kind of nasty situation. She's kind of bummed out and depressed about it. But she claims to be a Christian. There's a reason for it. And if we learn to trust God and see God in it, what's his, what's his purpose? What's his motive? What's his intention? If it's only for our good, we will find the good in the situation. Amen. Casey, you and Jeff lost everything in the fire. Right? What's the point? There's a point to it. There's a purpose to it. You still have the kids. Right? The Lord will restore that and more Amen. if you learn the lesson He wants you to learn. You're here. Is not God opening up blessings in your life? You don't know what's going to happen from day to day, but you're learning that you can trust Him and it will work out. Amen? Amen? You know, you what you don't realize is that people that live in that condition, as hard as it is for the flesh, okay? If you can learn to thrive in that condition, you will be miles and miles and miles ahead of 90% of the Christians out there. Because they don't know what it is to trust God. This is not the goal. The goal is to be closer to the goal is to be close to God, but you can only be close to God in faith. The point is that when you have to live day to day and trust God every day, you have to learn to live by faith. Amen? That's right. So the more faith you have in God, the closer you are to God. And that's the point. The point I'm getting is that most Christians never have their faith tried, and therefore they never know what they believe. You've been having your faith stretched, haven't you? Okay? It's one thing to kind of think you believe and think you know and think a bunch of things. Another thing to, oh my goodness, all right, I see how this applies, but I don't know that I want to do it. I don't know that I like what this is implying. But that's when our faith gets tried. That's when our faith gets tested. That's right. And that's why keeping that perspective of who God is and what God is and how God is is going to be critical for us to endure it. I come out the other side, Brad, you made a statement about uh, prophecy being negative. I know you were halfway joking. It's only negative depending on which side of the sword you're on. Yeah, that's true. If you surrender to the Lord and submit, then it's deliverance. If you stand in rebellion and stubbornness, it's destruction. He had to make our life hard. We make our life hard. We absolutely do, Lisa. You're right. Lisa was saying that he doesn't make our life hard, we make our life hard, which is absolutely the case. Choices we make. You know, we were going through the men's Bible study, we were, and I, I'm not going to get through it tonight, but I'll ask you guys, go read, uh, just read Proverbs chapter 1, starting, I think it's verse 20-ish.